Now, of course, if your life is backed by the anointing, you're backed by heaven. Amen? Is everybody okay? Let's go a little further. In verse 3. Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace we've been saved. By what? Grace, spirit of grace. Does everybody understand it? By, by the anointing. And raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you and I have been saved through faith, and that not of ourselves it is a gift of God, not of works lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Has everybody got it? Praise God. We're going to close at Matthew 11. Hallelujah. Glory. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Is everybody there? Eleven twenty eight. Jesus said, Come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke. What's his yoke? The anointing. His yoke is the anointing. Take my yoke upon you and what? Learn from me. Doesn't the Bible say that the anointing teaches you all things? Amen. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He's saying, Man, take my anointing and break your yokes of the spirit of antichrist the spirit of bondages which you and i have been involved with and live with in this realm so everybody got it come and learn from me he says his yoke is the anointing that destroys the yoke of this world so that our new life is backed with the eternal presence power and truth the anointing which is life eternal now many of people have forsaken the anointing and there's many testimonies of it Samson was one who forsook the anointing. Amen? He forsook the anointing with a harlot and became spiritually blinded and physically blinded and not fulfilling the call. He forsook the anointing. Saul, who was king, forsook the anointing and he, he died also. Why did he forsake the anointing? Because of pride. He, he was concerned about pleasing man instead of pleasing God. He forsook the anointing and lost the kingdom. Has everybody got that? Oh, hallelujah. King David, he forsook the anointing and was restored to it, though. But he, he forsook the anointing in the area where God would not allow him to build the house of God. And it was David's desire to build the house of God. That's what he, lo he loved. He wanted to. And God said, no, I'll allow you can't do it because you have blood on your hands because you killed your right-hand man for a woman. He said, but your son will be able to build my house. Does everybody understand this? These are individuals who have forsaken the anointing. Elijah. Followed the anointing. He followed Elijah. But Elijah's servant forsook the anointing for materialism. And when Elijah died and he was buried, 
He had no one to pass the anointing on to. And during war, they threw a dead body in his tomb. And the dead body touched the bones of Elijah. And the dead body came alive because the anointing was still on the bones of Elijah. Because he had no one to pass it on to. But Jesus went and got the anointing. Because everybody got it. He not only received the anointing as the Christ, but he went and got the anointing so it can continue to be passed on. When he died and went to hell, he took everything away from the power of darkness, the prince of power of air, to give to his children and those who follow him, anointed by him, and where the anointing is backed by him, the yoke of the powers of darkness in this realm will be destroyed. I said not managed, I said destroyed. And it says he did a public spectacle of them and destroying by defeating the powers of darkness in his death and resurrection through the anointing. The anointing must be backed in your life. Amen? If, the anoint if your life is not backed by the anointing, you are still yoked with the world. Does everybody got it? Is everybody Okay. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And we thank you for your mercies and your grace and your faithfulness. We are nothing without you. And Lord, we ask for your forgiveness in any area where we have forsaken the anointing, trampled the spirit of grace, and been outright rebellious. Please restore us. Restore us to the place where the kingdom is manifested where your anointing will flow through, where the world will see your presence in our life, where we'll see the love of Christ, the image and likeness and character of Christ, where your face will shine upon us and others will want you, but they'll see you in us. Lord, we repent for this country. We repent for her sins of harlotry, idolatry, fornication and forsaken the anointing we repent for the sins of the body of Christ and allowing the spirit of Antichrist to yoke herself with us Lord repent for all sins transgressions and iniquities and we ask father that you continue to wash us with the blood bring us revelation and impartation and reestablish your presence, your power, and your truth to your people in the spirit of unity. For you said in Psalm 133, it's good for brethren to dwell together. Dwell together in unity. It is a special anointing, a special oil that runs down from the top of the head to the tip of the toes. And in this, your blessing is commanded life eternal, which is the anointing. Lord, let us dwell in unity and maintain the anointing that Christ will be glorified in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.